this was the concept. Kyle got married to the second girl on the Call Her Daddy podcast, who no longer does the Call Her Daddy podcast. She's the one that, like, they had a, a fight over a dude, right? Yeah, yeah I think yeah. so. Can you pull her up, Austin? Do we have our TV on? Oh, yeah. Her name's Sophia, I believe. Sophia something. Hot chick. High status chick. Almost certainly a rich chick. Kyle is going to be marrying her. Everybody at the wedding, everybody involved with the wedding, is an actor or an extra, except for the priest and Kyle's best man. Now, I didn't get all of the story, but I guess what the backstory was is that Kyle was getting married to the super hot chick and he didn't have any friends who were actually high status dudes. So he had to hire an actor to pretend to be a doctor. Dang. And also because of some backstory lie he got caught in, Kyle. There we go. The girl on the right. Damn. They're both hot. Shout out Kyle. Shout out Kyle. He's getting married to this chick in fantasy land. The Mark, as they call him, the guy who was getting pranked, the fake best man, also had to pretend he was Lithuanian. So Lithuanian, doctor. Oh, yeah. He had to pretend his hand was crippled the whole time. <laughs> Again, I didn't hear the backstory, so I don't know if this was a snowboarding accident, genetic, but he had to walk around with a flipper hand. And he had to go by the name Ben Steinberg. <laughs> ben Steinberg. We all know that means he's Jewish, right? Yeah. Well, the guy shows up black as black can be. What do you mean? He's a black dude. Oh, he's black. And he's got oh. face tattoos and hand tattoos. The makeup artists have to go and cover all of that shit up to make him look like he feasibly could be a doctor in Lithuanian. Oh, my God. So he gets in there into the, I don't know what they call it, the reception, the dinner, the thing before the ceremony where it's less formal and people are getting hammered and they're having dinner. I don't, I think that's the reception. Yeah, I think that's the reception. Maybe. I haven't been to enough weddings. That's the first scene. And I'm the guy who put together the wedding. So I get up there, big smile. Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming out. I am Theodore Logan, the man who put this little shindig together. And then everybody's just cheering for me and shit. I'm going around big smiles. Girls over there, tequila shots. My man right here wants a nice rosé. Champagne for the lady in the back, bartender. Just being that charismatic guy who's running the wedding. My first move on the mark, I came in really hot, Leo. Maybe a little too hot, even. I decide that since everybody else is just ordering, like, ah, oh, gin and tonic, ah, oh, shot of Patron, I make the bartender make me a virgin cosmopolitan with an umbrella. And I take it over to the guy, like, virgin cosmopolitan for the best man, while he's introducing himself to the bridesmaids, who were this girl from Call Her Daddy's Friends. Damn. So this guy, a smooth, streetwise black man, sees the hottest white bitches he's ever seen in his fucking life. He's over there fucking schmoozing it up. He forgets his role. His flipper hand goes back to normal. The <laughs> Lithuanian accent disappears. And I come over and I'm just thrusting a virgin Cosmo in his face to the point where he wants to hit me. He's like, hey, leave me alone, man. Get away. Get away from me. <laughs> and right there, I was like, ah, oh, fuck. I might. He's the mark. He's the mark. Okay. So he's an actor, but he's the mark? Yes, he's an actor. He thinks everybody else is real. He thinks oh. he's the only actor. I'm sorry if I misexplained that. Yeah, I got that. I got he thinks that. the entire wedding is legit. And it looks super legit. We're at a nice restaurant. The meals are all super fucking legit. I'm out there bussing tables and shit to make myself look real, too. I thought I pushed it too far with the Virgin Cosmo. Also, I was trashing his shirt because he came in with this Ross-ass design like print, like basically a button up you would wear to a homecoming dance. Oh, wow. He comes in with that and everybody else is in a suit. Yeah. So Kyle tells me, he's like, dude, the guy really doesn't like you. And I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. I might've pushed it too far. So I start showing off my bus boy skills, like stacking up four plates on my hand, clearing super French style. And I think the heat comes off me. But while I'm introducing speeches and I'm running the festivities, I start to notice because the whole time I just got this big smile on my face. I'm in charge of everything that the bridesmaids are fucking digging me. Really? Ooh. The bridesmaids. How do you know? I'll tell you. Let me describe <laughs> them real quick first. One of them is, I think, cousins or something with. Well, I'm not going to describe them too intimately because like you said, I mean, they're hot fucking chicks. I think Sophia's cousin 
super, super beautiful face. One of them is this bombshell blonde with giant fake tits. Um, the other one, one has giant tits and it's hot too. They're all just smoking fucking hot. But nice. the Nelk boys, everybody, including the actors, the, the fucking extras. And by the way, the actors are so well cast. There's an old guy, like his, he's, he's in his 60s, who's supposed to be Sophia's dad. And he's a neurosurgeon. There are black people, white people, old people, young people. They got such a good mix. It's not a bunch of assholes in full send flip flops. Mm -hmm. Like they really did it right. But because I'm in charge of all this shit and I'm the one getting shots and entertaining and being fun, the girls start like calling me over. At one point, one of them grabs my hand and starts holding my hand and shit. Damn. What? And it gets a little gnarly too because I'm, I'm slamming champagne. I'm making toasts and people are making me chug. So I'm starting to get a little buzzed. Uh -oh. And my character, I know he's such a scumbag that I'm flirting back. I'm talking about the hotel room after the reception. <laughs> and they're sort of digging it, Leo. Like they're touching me and holding my hand and stuff. But then what happens? And this is a good lesson to all the guys out there. We've talked about this a lot lately. That time kills all romance. The girls were having a great time. The Nelk boys were hitting it off with them. I was hitting it off with them. But then there's a two-hour break between the reception and the actual ceremony. Once we get to the actual ceremony, after the time has passed and the, the like, we're in a lighter room and we're standing around sitting on our hands, nothing to talk about, all of the girls just start ignoring all of the guys, including me. It got so bad that after the shoot... We, by chance, me, Salim, and Real Cousin Jay end up at the same sushi restaurant as Sophia and all her chicks, and they just don't talk to us. What? Wow. The energy had so died, and we'd failed to be interesting to them outside of that really high-energy party atmosphere. Bullshit. It just goes to show you, though, you don't have much time. Your shit will start to stink if you spend a lot of time around girls. So what would have been the move if you were single? The move, if I were single, or if the Nelk boys wanted to fuck successfully, would have been to... I mean, if they really wanted to fuck on that shoot, they wouldn't have done this because it would have fucked up the, the whole everything. But the move would have been to be like, girls, let's well, we have two hours of intermission right now. Let's hit the hotel room. Let's, let's do a couple lines of coke. Oh, Even yeah. if you got to lie about having coke, get yeah. up there like, whoopsie! Just start taking shots of vodka, King. On set, dude, I was oh, yeah. uh, I was doing that. That was basically my my role on set as the stripper, this 1980 stripper, was to do fake lines of coke, mm -hmm. and it's B vitamins, and it boy does it look and feel just like coke, and it even gives you a little bit of a rush. Is and it inert though? Does it burn? It doesn't burn. Hmm. Mm -mm. But you could totally fake. Uh, we could totally fuck with Fan Jerry with B vitamin Coke. <laughs> dude, I think you can order it on Amazon. But dude, I, I ripped. I probably ripped like fifteen lines. I didn't do. Sh I mean, I got. And besides having a little energy, it fucking you could fuck with Fan Jerry for sure, or girls in general. You could literally pretend to have Coke, and it's just B vitamins. It goes in your nose so easy too. Wow. That is the key to a woman's vagina too. Is cocaine in <laughs> L.A. like a shady bitch? Yeah, like in a Vegas. Shady, like and most. Yeah, any girl willing to party and get hammered and yeah. like who's like you know in their twenties, even thirties, like yeah, yeah, cocaine is. Yeah, listen to me. They call it white girl. I know. I remember like drug dealers back in the day used to call it white girl. Mm. Uh, that's how you smash a white girl. Right, Absolutely, exactly, yeah. it is white and it helps you fuck white girls. Mm -hmm. I think Leo's right. I think any chick you see out in L.A. who's hammered, they all want to have a good time. They're all drowsy because they probably work a job during the day and they're exhausted. None of them, or almost none of them, will say no if you just real smoothly bust out a little dime baggie like, hey, Michelle, my treat. Grab one of these bar straws, take this into the bathroom, enjoy yourself. <laughs> I can guarantee any of the young men listening that 10 times out of 10, once again, 9 times out of 10, I'm sorry, that girl will go into the bathroom, do a couple tootskis, come out and be yours for the rest of the night. Okay, you're the mother duck now. She's the duckling that can't stray too far because you're holding the bag. It's true. So, so these girls, what, what do you mean? Like, how icy was the reception at the sushi place? They weren't, they didn't hate us. They weren't they, being like, Not even a wave? No, there was a little bit of a wave. But there was the energy. It was all acting, quote unquote. We were uh -huh. all acting like we were friends right. and we were in a festive atmosphere. But 
that's your reality becomes whatever it is you're doing. So the yeah. line between reality and acting got crossed. I was acting as this guy who was in control of the situation, the boss, the fun guy who everybody liked. And it became the girls as reality and they liked me. Right. But then it just disappeared once it became clear that I was a hired gun and we were just all on a set doing this thingy and that they were still rich L.A. tens. Yeah. And I am a middle class L.A. <laughs> nine and a half. Hey, my boy. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's method <laughs> acting is what you were doing. Basically, it's like you're so aligned and harmonized with the character mm -hmm. that you're really naturally showing those traits and then they're attracted to that yeah and then it's a comparison to you when you're not in the role yeah it's like wow these dudes are lame yeah type shit and it goes to show you i was talking to one of the guys in nelk about filming drunk and i told him filming drunk is the same as picking up chicks you think you need it until you go out sober and you just make yourself act as if and pretty soon after a couple of warm-up approaches where you do go down in flames yeah you'll be warmed up and you'll just feel fine. It'll be flowing and it won't make any difference if you're drunk or not. Same mm -hmm. filming. A lot of same thing guys say the same thing is that they were addicted to alcohol in the beginning because it mm -hmm. loosens you up. But once they got over that mental bridge, kind of, they started just doing it without it. And it was like the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about the Nelk shoot yesterday. There's a director now. There are producers on board with Nelk. It's a big production. Whoa. So I really, you have to think twice about the moves you're making. Me chasing the guy around with the Cosmo, the Virgin Cosmopolitan, was already unscripted and maybe out of line on my part. Oh, yeah. But I wanted to, and I would have if it was one of our shoots. I would have gone over to his plate and started eating off his plate in front of him. Oh. There would have been no end to what I would have done to this guy. Yeah. But those guys like us, when we're working with Nelk, you're not in charge hmm. and it limits the, fr that's why I like what we do. We can do whatever the fuck we want, whatever we want. Absolutely. But yeah, but being a producer on one of those shows was, it was a good gig. I mean, it, it was fun. Yeah. You would, you would have liked it for sure. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like what we do in real life here, you know, basically for fan Jerry like, or Nico you know, or Nico when he's yeah. drunk. When he's drunk, exactly. It's just, it's so, TV's fallen so far. I, I saw this advertisement on Instagram for a new show, and you know how they used to have those Yo Mama battles? Yeah. This is like a oh. Yo Mama battle show. Oh, no. But they, they, they can't be offensive or mean. They can't call oh. her fat or, or ugly. So they're like, Yo Mama's so sweet, her dentist is on speed dial. Jesus. And it's hey. like... What the fuck is this? They have bro. a roast battle at fucking the haha. -ha Your mama jokes aren't even funny in the first place. So <laughs> taking out the offensive is, is I don't know the dead end. Your mom's idea. your mom's belts the equator. I always thought that one was pretty funny. That is kind of funny. Your mom is so fat. Her mom your mom's belts the equator. <laughs> or what your you mom is so dumb she puts money in a in a meter and waits for the gumballs to come out. <laughs> wow, it's <laughs> kind of funny. Sure. I'm just gonna wrap up the Nelk shoot story real mm. quick. It actually, it didn't go as smooth as the Bigfoot one. So check mm. this shit out. The idea was that, I guess I can talk about this. Yeah, I mean, they, they said I could post whatever about it. It's going to come out soon. And I don't think me talking about it here is going to steal any of the viewership. The idea was that at the wedding, the Mark, the guy who they hired, the actor, was going to catch the girl Kyle was going to marry, the girl from call her daddy he was going to catch her the mark was going to catch her hooking up with steiny who was the guy she went on a fake date with in another nelk video have you guys seen that video it's I pretty fucking saw that there's this guy yeah, steiny who's super fucking cool i had dinner with him i really really liked him but he's one of the dudes in the he would be like ardino who was just mm. he's um like a little insecure about his position in the squad and for him, going on a date with a smoking hot chick would be a big event. So Steiny's there, and the chick, again, is from the Call Her Daddy podcast. She's got like 700,000 followers, like drop-dead gorgeous, rich. So he's fucking panicking on the date. He just randomly starts telling her how much his chains cost and how much I, his watch I saw that Whoa. on Instagram. Oh, yeah, I, I saw, saw that clip. clip. I saw the clip. It's great. I really like that guy. He was awesome. But they reprised that by having him and her making out in a room upstairs. And we had to set the mark up to walk in. So it was my job to lead him up there, like point him into the room. And he goes in there and they're fucking hooking up. And then he's faced with this moral dilemma. Does he tell Kyle that his fucking chick is cheating? I guess after that scene and after that setup, he started to get suspicious. 
Oh. One of the audio operators said he wasn't for sure that there was any prank going on, but he was like, man, this is this is feeling crazy. What's going on here? And there might have like been a little bit of doubt. But then during the ceremony, there was a real fucking priest. They had even more extras than there were during the reception. And the stunt fight was just incredible. The stunt fight looked so good where two guys objected to the marriage. They started swinging on each other. They accidentally knocked over a 70-year-old woman who bit into a blood capsule and started bleeding all over the floor. (laughs) It looked great. I saw this guy. He was on the fucking hook. Producers talked to him intermittently throughout the day. He was totally on the hook. But what happened was the boys, like Kyle and those guys, they started fucking... It was hilarious, actually. They said, you're a fucking doctor, dude. Help the old woman. And of course, he's not a fucking doctor and he's not Lithuanian. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know what's going on. And then people started talking shit to him and it got like a little combative. And then when the prank reveal came, I guess he was like, I fucking knew it was a prank. I fucking knew it. Even though he didn't know. So it just, it like, it it, it took the air out of the ending, which was really unfortunate. Mm. I was bummed. I was bummed. I'm almost positive he was fucking lying and he didn't actually know. That was my vibe. But he seemed like he didn't want to look like a fool. So he just started calling out, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Yeah. It sounds like a pretty good reaction nonetheless. Yeah, they're still going to use it. It was still incredible. So many funny funny. things happened. But it just, it sucked that the guy was worried about his street cred. Yeah. And he couldn't have just fucking... Well, he had tats. He's a black dude. Probably a nigga, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to look bad. <laughs> he had face tats, dude. Yeah, face tats. Yeah. 